Welcome to my messy garage. Um, this is our second part of the series, looking at the Alfred Golf E-Wheel system. Uh, I have this unit charged up. Today we're going to take my Click Gear 8.0, uh, the four-wheel model cart, and we are going to remove the factory wheels and brackets and put on the new brackets supplied with the E-Wheels unit. I'm going to take you step by step, show you what is required. If you go to the Alfred Golf USA website, they have some great step-by-step -step videos, which are short and sweet, that show you the basics. And they also have uh, a really nice manual you can print out. I print out the couple pages that are uh, important. I've reviewed them. It appears you only need a few simple tools, and I will show you what I actually use. I have my whole Craftsman toolkit here, but it looks like all you need is a screwdriver and a wrench, essentially, and it's about everything. Um, Let's jump in and get started. If your unit has rear wheel braking, you have to remove that on the Click Here 8.0. The brake systems are on the front two wheels, so nothing to remove there. We'll be able to jump right in. It says it works best doing this if the wheels are up in the air and you need to measure the wheelbase as well. So I'm gonna flip it upside down and we'll go from there. One sec. All right, so first things first, we are going to remove the bracket. We'll start with this side right here. Um, technically, you could remove the screw. You'd have to pop off the little plastic cover and just take this bolt off. But I'm gonna find out the uh, hard way, whether or not you can be lazy or if you can just take it off with simple tools. Um, you could use an adjustable wrench on this end to take these off but it looks like it's a 10 millimeter wrench and if you just run a standard screwdriver on the bottom to hold it in place should be pretty quick to take these off let's see does not take much to get these off. There is a nylon thread to keep, keep it from backing off itself. But once you get past the nylon insert, it comes off. And hopefully, this will now come off quite easily. And it does. I've been getting good use out of this. Clean it up a little bit. All right, I'm going to reposition so we can look at the other side. And we will come back in a second. Common sense kicked in already, and I realized before moving to the other side, I can go ahead and put the correct bracket on. You'll realize that it is going to go on the same fashion the existing one went on, so you can kind of match it up. Realize that from the top end, this clamp comes down to clamp onto the bar, so I believe it should go on just like this. If I'm making a mistake, you guys will see it live. I'm not going to edit it out. This way, if I make a mistake, hopefully you guys can learn from it and uh, not make the same mistakes I do. Uh, I am using the hardware supplied with it. It looks like it's the same sort of thing. It's a one screw with a nut that has a nylon thread to keep it from backing off while you're playing. And these nylon thread locking nuts have saved me many times. I actually like using them on projects because you don't have to use a lock washer or anything like that. Pretty much do the job quite well. Come on, play nicely. There we go. Get her moving through. Hm. Trying to be gentle, not use too much force. Get it lined up and she'll come through nicely. Again, we're going to tighten these down. You don't have to try to over tighten or be super tight. Once that tip gets past that nylon thread, you know it's not going to back out. 
says you want to get them nice and tight, but don't overdo it. Don't break anything over tightening it. Don't strip out the top of the screw. That side's nice and top, tight. Now I'll reposition so we can do the other side. All right, it's gonna be the same thing, but now we're on the opposite side. Let's go ahead and remove the bracket and wheel and put the new one on. I am gonna go back after I get these off and I'm gonna take the factory hardware and put it right back through the holes so that I don't lose it. And that's one of the reasons I did not take the, the shaft out and the wheel off is because I'd like to keep them together. Uh, just in case it ever has to go back together, have all my pieces back together in one spot. Uh, makes it a little bit easier. Makes it harder for things to get lost if you keep everything together. There we go. Broken loose. Slide this side off once again. It's got a little dirt and gunk built up in there. Wipe it down, get it somewhat clean. All right. I cheated on the other one. I went ahead and I had taken these screws out while it was uh, off camera. This time I can't cheat. I'm just going to pop them off real quick. Let's get this one installed. The plastic inserts inside um, that kind of level it up on here. Kind of have to pinch it open a little bit to get it over, but it doesn't take too much. Not too much force. For those watching at home, yes, I just took one bolt out at a time, which I guess is extremely lazy or efficient. Either or. I figure, what does it hurt? As long as I can get this one lined up and get it pushed through gently, tighten these up, be on to the next step. Yeah, much nicer that way. Seems like on the other side I did this inside nut first and then the outside it was a little more difficult, maybe because this bar is skinnier and kind of flex more. Doing it this way and flexing it down it was much easier to get that bolt to come through. So, lesson learned to those who are watching online. All right, let's get this snugged up. Snug enough. I'm going to reposition, get an image, because the next step is going to be us measuring the wheelbase. So the next thing we need to do is we need to measure the actual wheelbase of this, and it's from the outside edge, the outside edge of the clamp brackets we just installed on. So that's what we'll do next. And that looks like it's right at about 25 and a half inches for this Click Gear 8. So I'm going to get the E Wheels model over here, the unit itself, and show you how you adjust the stoppers if it's needed. One second, let's reposition. All right, so the first thing I want to show, because I feel it might be helpful to some, as uh, I should have read the manual first, I've already charged this base unit up, but I want to show you something about the charging. Charge ports right here has a nice little water protective covering or dust protective to keep stuff from getting in there. The plug, I don't know if you can see that, has a tiny groove in the top of the circle so it can only go in one way. So once you match it up, that goes down. It's up and charging. Now one thing I looked at and I was going, well how do I know it's charging? There's no indicators on here telling me it's charging. I immediately went and looked at the manual and realized I need to look at the little power pack. When that light right there is red, it means it's charging. Uh, when it turns green, it means it's complete charging. This does have a full charge on it. I'm guessing just because I plugged in last night, this will stay red for a minute or two, then go back to green. It should be fully charged, but we'll find out. Uh, another thing you can do is you can actually hit the power button on the unit, and it'll show you how full it is. It lets you know the battery's charging, but I believe I will unplug this. 
you'll see that it is fully charged up. I believe these lights actually start going out as your battery power goes down. All right, so let's measure the wheelbase. The first thing you want to do is we want to pull these wheels out as far as they go and measure and see if it is at 25 and a half or else if we should move those stoppers down some for the back. So I'll very quickly slide out the wheels um, just by eyeballing it. That looks a little bit wide to me, but that's why we have measuring tapes to be sure. So this looks like it is at 28 inches from factory. So I believe we can see if we can take, you know, an inch off either side, we'll probably be good to go. So what you do here is we're going to flip the whole unit upside down. You'll see the little stopper mechanism. All we'll need is a screwdriver again, if I remember the instructions correctly. And I'll get this flipped over and show you guys what we're going to do. All right, this is looking at the underside of the unit. I could flip it around if you want to see the top of the unit. All we did was flip it upside down. This is your stopper here, and it looks like these are roughly one inch apart. So I'm pretty sure if we move that stopper just one in on either side, we're probably good to go. There's a screw head right here. I hope everything's showing up better tonight. I did not like the lighting last night, so I ordered a better lighting solution. So hopefully you guys can see all this detail. So my first time doing this, hopefully I've read the instructions correctly, but we will loosen this screw, slide it in, see if we can adjust it one in and see if that gets us, we'll remeasure at the end and see if that gets us where we want to be. Might be a more elegant way to do what I'm doing right here, but it's working. All right, and now in that little hole, I see the threads are right. For anyone who has never worked a lot with tools, because I don't assume everybody on this video have actually worked. Um, if you've never been told this before, if you're about to put a screw into the threads, it's always best to do an unscrewing motion until you feel that screw to catch you'll feel the step and that way you're making sure you don't cross thread it because cross threading a piece of metal is only going to cause problems that time i realized i have the wheel pushed in too much because it was not finding it at all so let's try that again always safe than sorry you don't want to put pressure and immediately start screwing in cross threaded and ruin something let's go backwards first all right there's that step going in feels like it's nice and tight grabbing in there don't overdo it i'm putting a lot of downward pressure just making sure she's going in there nice and good all right we got one side set up i'm going to switch over and let's try the other side all right so i flipped the unit around here's side number two once again we're going to move it in one position as that should hopefully take one inch off either side and move it from about 28 inches down to 26. And since we measured 25 and a half, that should be about perfect. Don't want to lose that piece. Oh, that's kind of nice if you slide it all together. Oh, looks like it's lining up perfect right there. All right. I don't know how easy it is to see. I also have a little flashlight. But all you're trying to see right here is make sure that that little hole right inside there lines up with the little stopper slide stopper once you get it lined up pretty well like I said before go counterclockwise first to make sure you find this the threads once you feel that little set step like that start screwing in nice and slow if it ever feels super tight now these seem like they are new threads so it is a little snug going in but if you ever feel it being ridiculously tight, you might want to tell yourself, oh, let's stop and see if I'm chasing the threads correctly. Go till it's snug. You don't have to overdo it. All it is is a stopper. So now she's maxed out. I'm going to pull the camera back out again so you can see the new measurement. But if my calculation is correct, this should be just about right. All right, moment of truth. Do we have 
at least 25 and a half inches of clearance between either side. Wow, that looks like it's just under 26, but it should be perfect. So I'm gonna grab my cart and bring it over and see how hard it is to snap on the back pieces. I will undo each of the clamps right now as I bring it over, but you'll see me try to fit it for the first time and see if it goes on easy or if I have any sort of difficulty, but here goes nothing. That side's definitely in. Have not locked down the clamp yet. Kind of want to center it. Yeah, looks like we have about somewhere around half an inch to an inch of extra space on either side, which is nice. So I'm just centering the gap on either side. Um, and I can show you that in case anyone wants to see it. Get the camera. So if you look right there, the gap right there in between the clamp and the wheel on each side now looks like it's somewhere between a quarter and a half an inch and it looks pretty equal so without any further ado I'm going to rotate both clamps down make sure she holds tight I'm gonna lift up on the unit the entire thing and make sure it doesn't drop out make sure I've done it correctly definitely feels nice and tight when you get the clamp all the way to the end at first not much pressure but by the end of it you kind of put in a little bit of pressure and it grips tight and yeah lifting the entire unit up off the ground no problem at all uh i've read ahead and read the entire manual and know that when the unit's turned off and there's also something you can do with remote control to disable the electronic brake but when you do that um, it allows you to push it without having to fight the motor and it's not bad definitely a little bit more resistance than if you had your standard push card a little bit more weight but if for any reason you forgot to fully charge it and had to go with this, it wouldn't kill you. It'd work you out a little bit more. But, alright. I think the last thing I'm trying to capture tonight should only be a second, but the remote control holder up on the handlebar, I'm going to reposition the camera, and we'll do that really quickly. Alright, this is our final step. This right here is a little clamp bracket. You can see, real simple design. This is going to put pressure here and clamp it. It's just a screw. You adjust it as tight as you need so it'll grab onto your bracket. And then you got this little Alphard golf. I mean, you can put it upside down, but my OCD me is going to make me put it the correct way so that holds on to your remote control pretty well. That magnet's pretty strong. So without any further ado, um, I'm going to choose to put it left to center. I don't know if you can see this, but for whatever reason, my rubber grip on this side is slid down, whereas the one on this side, I guess the gap is here. Um, don't know why that is it may have slid down while pushing or might have always always been that way but seems perfect to me I'll clamp to this uh, I guess I wouldn't have to adjust it down so much if I clamped it onto the rubber um, as I think about it which hand I push more with yeah I'm gonna go to put it on the metal because it's cleaner I might switch it over to the right side if it annoys me for any reason I can tell looking right here that's a lot of gap that, that I have to make up so all you do is rotate this clockwise like a screw and I'm assuming that is correct I have not done this yet but I've used similar clamps before so once you start bottoming out the plastic starts hitting let's clamp and see how she is uh, still a little loose once again if you clamp to the rubber we wouldn't have had to tighten that quite so much and also it probably would grab easier to the rubber than to the metal bar but me being picky oh that's a nice tight that's not going it's, it you can move it if you have to which is nice but it's pretty snug and now you can position the remote so when you walk, you can use it. Well, that's everything. Um, I'm impressed. This was very easy to put on for the first time. I briefly read through the manual. Um, I'm going to walk around. I do have the front end propped up on a bench, but that's only because of my tripod hot height to get that. But the brackets are really clean install. Easy to adjust the width of the E-Wheels unit. Um, when you're done with that, you just flip the clamp on either side lift your card up off of it. You can
push the wheels back in and carry it inside with that nice carry handle and go charge it up again. All the parts and pieces have gone in nice and easy. Uh, it looks clean, even up here on the grip. I like this. I think I'm going to run it a little bit more vertical in time. But very nice kit so far. Very simple, easy to follow instructions. Um, and seems like quality pieces. Nice metal instead of everything being plastic. So in the next video, I'm going to actually take it out and drive it. I would love to go out right this second, but it is quite dark outside and it would be horrible quality for you all watching at home. So tomorrow we'll have some more fun. I'll try to get up another video showing my first impressions. My backyard is a steep decline, so I'll get a chance to kind of run it uphill, downhill and tell you what it says in the manual about working on inclines and declines. So, all right. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll try to address it in one of the upcoming videos. Thanks.